So going into episode 9, I described this episode 1 where the streets needed a body. And not only did the streets get a body, they confirmed 4. Lou got retribution for Marvin by killing Jimmy, who unfortunately killed Renee. And she was confirmed dead after we saw Marvin at her funeral. Traymon was someone who described Rock as a bitch whose blood runs colder than Cartier. And that's saying some shit. And he wasn't wrong. Rock and Lou's interest aligned by getting rid of Cartier. Because sometimes in this game, you can't take any risks. Cartier was someone who rolled hard in the streets. And as Law 15 from the 48 Laws of Power teaches us, crush your enemy totally. And not only did Rock crush Cartier totally, she crushed him with the same advice she gave Kanan in Season 1. When you put someone down, you gotta make sure they stay down. Hit twice where his heart beat at. And once where he used to think. We saw Rock and Lou putting two bullets in Cartier's chest, and one in the head, and another from Lou. But I don't think that was the biggest death. Famous was described as someone who wasn't built for this shit in Season 1. But everyone's in this game. And Freddy's kill has definitely opened the door for a new character. And I think we all know who it could be. Which is something I'm going to come back around to in this breakdown of Raising Kanan Season 2, Episode 9. Now, you all heard those on death row having their last and final meal, but this was Jimmy's last and final drink, because hitting Marvin was never gonna go unanswered, because that's not how the Thomases roll. We learned that in season 1, when Marvin hit back unique for what Warrell did to Lou, and now it was Lou's turn to be there for his big brother, and there goes Jimmy. Now, although Renee was shot and killed in episode 8, this was the confirmation. And Marvin did have to fight back the tears, because Renee was someone who really did have a huge impact on Marvin. If it wasn't for Renee, I doubt whether he would have had this sit down with Duke. This was something that was well overdue, with Marvin finally apologizing to Duke, even though Duke was wrong to spit in Marvin's face, because that in itself is a violation. He should never have put his hands on his daughter. But sometimes to mend a relationship, you have to work on yourself and all the problems that you have that got you in this position in the first place. And a quote which I recently read by Adil Ahmed reads, Make sure you're balanced and centered, and you know what you want and what you deserve. Loving yourself changes who you attract. And this is why Duke is so mature for her age. She understands in order for them to fix their relationship, Marvin needs to fix himself. And Marvin himself said, he wants to balance all the bad shit he's done with the good. So ironically where Renee had a good impact on Marvin, in a way which was helping him fix this relationship and reconnect with Duke, he fucked up with Sam, the crackhead. Sam was arrested early in episode 9, and when you find yourself with your back against the wall, in the back of a police car, or behind four walls, some people really do start to use all their bargaining chips, and Sam had a bargaining chip, which was what he saw at Baisley Park in season 1, episode 10. Ain't no discounts, ain't no shots. ain't no return. Now, crackers aren't exactly the most trustworthy, which is why these officers had a bit of fun with Sam. But Burke is someone who's been on the Howard case in the background, and so she was all eyes and ears. And one name which was dropped by Sam was famous, because he didn't know Kanan's name. But Burke wanted more information from Sam, something which he said he's happy to give in exchange for some money. But lurking around the corner this time around was Detective Howard. How would someone who hasn't just tried to warn Burke? He's gone one step further by planting information to James about how Beck was supplying and messing with Duke and Nicole. But Duke said she isn't someone who talks to the police, and she sure doesn't talk to the police about the police. Quite ironic considering Duke does eventually become a cop in DC. But Detective Beck has been warned by her girlfriend Adina, who again warned her to stop looking into Howard. But she's also been warned by Howard himself and Captain Baptiste who did pick up the phone to someone in internal affairs, which no doubt is about Berg. And I did run a theory about how we could see Berg potentially being suspended, but she is also treading on the fine line of death. So, could we see Howard going against all his beliefs and doing what needs to be done? So just before we come back to Marvin and Sam, we need to take a look at Howard. Now, we were introduced to some more of Howard's backstory in episode 9. He's someone who's trying to get back into his faith, and he wants to make sure he stays on the right path. 
but where Kanan says all this shit is new to him, it's also new for Howard as well. But regardless of all the bad shit Rock has done and how Kanan wants to know how long Rock knew Howard was his father, Howard basically said that's a conversation he needs to have with his moms. And from where I'm sitting, Howard has been more than fair, although I'm not sure we could say the same about Rock. But this righteous path that he's on may need to take a turn because he was the person who was on the other side of this conversation that Rock was having and that's how she knew about Sam. So while Marvin was having a moment with Lou, Rock switched it straight back to business, not just wanting to make the Italians bleed but tasking Marvin to get rid of Sam. So this is where it comes full circle to how Marvin's trying to change, be there for Duke and the impact that Renee had. Instead of killing Sam, he gave a crackhead a hell of a lot of money, put him on a bus to Atlanta and told him to get the fuck out of New York and never come back otherwise he'll have to put him down. But this was a huge mistake because Marvin should have known not to trust a crackhead and now when Beck speaks to Sam in episode 10, which is not a matter of if, it's a matter of when, Howard has a decision to make because we all know how much Howard and Rock want to protect Kanan. So will she be fired, suspended or will it be a last day on earth? Now, Rock didn't just have an Italian problem in episode 9, she had a Cartier problem, a problem which she shared with Lou. When Lou made the deal with Cartier, he told him he'd be a silent partner, but in trying to avoid a deal with one devil, Lou made a deal with another, and so he had to find a way to get rid of Cartier, because despite Lou being a majority shareholder, he couldn't exactly slap Cartier like he used to do with Crown. There's also the issue of money, which is where greed kicks in. Everyone wants a piece of the pie, and Cartier wanted his. But what he failed to realize was even though he had control over Lou, Rock had control over him. In a previous breakdown, I mentioned that Rock and Cartier's relationship was purely business in Rock's eyes, but all Cartier was seeing was this beautiful woman in a red dress. He wasn't seeing the devil. The same woman he had his eyes on was making moves with Tremon, helping him with Abraham's weapons charge, something which Cartier refused to help him with, and he said he was happy to work with Rock, but the problem they had was Cartier. He wouldn't just let them walk away, he needed to be handled and so now Lou and Rock had something in common which is why we saw them come together, put two bullets in Cartier's heart, one in the head and another from Lou and there goes Cartier Duns for Reed. Now although Cartier's death is huge, arguably the biggest death in my opinion is Freddy, not just because of Famous pulling the trigger but it does seem like he's setting up the introduction to a new player. But Famous was in a great place ever since his mom kicked him out in episode 2 and although I thought he'd go down the path of potentially being a drug addict, he took it to another extreme after Cartier shut the door on him when he needed Lou's help. But seeing Freddy at Girardi's and with Kanan telling Famous how he's only getting paid by doing grimy shit got Famous thinking because he needed to get paid and the only way he was going to get paid if he started to do grimy shit just like Freddy. So with the help of Corinne giving him Palomar's gun, we saw him step to Freddy and we all know Famous isn't built for the streets but nevertheless he's still in the game and now more than ever after he killed Freddy. And there are two things that are going to come from this. One, Palomar's gun now has Freddy's body connected to it. And two, someone on the other side of this door had everything that went down, including the name of Famous. And I'm not sure about you guys, but I do think they've been throwing subtle nods to Breeze. And with Kanan set to do his own shit, Breeze is a final piece in the jigsaw which will fully take Kanan away. Because I wouldn't be surprised to see the person behind this door, whoever they are, step into Famous and Kanan and telling them they work for him or Famous goes down and we all know Kanan grew up under the guidance of Breeze and not Rock and so I do think it is time. So let's see whether they reveal who was behind this door in episode 10. But elsewhere, Roxil has an Italian problem following the death of Jimmy. Some of the Italians want payback but Sal knows he can't move on Rock until he knows what he's dealing with and that's where Unique comes in. But Unique knows Marco is the one who fucked up and he's also no snitch. So even though Unique did help Sal last time, that was all business but this is now personal and Unique knows not to get involved in anyone's personal beef and certainly not Rock's. And on the other side, Rock wants blood and she's calling in guys from all over the place to move in on the Baselis and something I'm glad to see is Lou's down for the cause because this is only gonna end in bloodshed in episode 10. And so that's a breakdown of episode 9 which gave us plenty of death, character development, 
but also sets us up for an explosive finale. A finale where I think we could be introduced to a new player, based on the events that unfolded with Famous killing Freddy. Who do you guys think is behind this door? Drop all your thoughts down below on all things episode 9, and of course if you are new to the channel and you haven't done so already, then remember to smash the subscribe button if you want to see everything Power Book 3 and Power Universe related. But as always, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.